Since the All-Star break, the Dallas Mavericks have the third best record in the NBA and the fourth best net rating over that span. Luka Doncic is playing at an MVP level, and the synergy between him and Kyrie Irving has never been better. Arguably most important is the fact that their defense has improved drastically since the start of the season, going from the 19th ranked defense before the All-Star break to the 10th ranked defense since the All-Star break. So the question is, does this team have what it takes to win the Western Conference and potentially even win it all? We already know that Luka Doncic is good enough to take you far in the postseason as we saw in the 2022 playoffs where the Mavericks managed to make their way to the Western Conference Finals. That was obviously a much different team, but in a lot of ways, it's hard to say that this current version of the Dallas Mavericks isn't significantly better than that version of the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas currently has an offensive rating that's scoring three and a half points per 100 possessions more than league average. And the 2022 Dallas Mavericks team that went to the Western Conference Finals were only 1.8 points per 100 possessions above league average in offensive efficiency. One major difference, though, is that that Dallas team was actually pretty good defensively. Dallas had the eighth best defense that year, having a defensive rating that was two points per 100 possessions better than league average. And this year as a whole, they're pretty much just around league average in terms of defensive rating. But if you look at their defensive rating since the all-star break, they've been the 10th best defense in 1.3 points per 100 possessions better than league average. So offensively, this team appears to be quite a bit better than that one on paper. And at least since the all-star break, they've been really good defensively. The backbone of the Mavericks' success has been this increased synergy that we've seen between Kyrie and Luka. Throughout last year, and even a little bit at the beginning of this year, there were still some questions that people had about whether or not they were going to be able to function together, but we've seen them establish a seemingly unstoppable two-man game and some really great chemistry that's allowed the Mavericks to experience a ton of offensive success. We've seen the Mavericks integrate Kyrie as a screener for Luka, and the reason it's been so successful is because a lot of times, teams are going to send two players to Luka when he's coming off of a screen to ensure that he isn't able to get moving downhill. And that's going to oftentimes leave Kyrie open for spot up opportunities. Let's say that you do manage to prevent a pass to him for a spot up. You're then tasked with keeping up with him cutting off ball and Kyrie is just too fast and shifty that he's going to lose you before you even realize anything's happened. The Mavericks will run this zoom action, which is an off ball screen followed by a dribble handoff. And Jimmy is going to continue to chase Luca over the screen while Rozier drops back a little bit in anticipation of the Gafford Luca pick and roll. But this ends up leaving two defenders on Luca with Rozier paying attention to Gafford and this is gonna leave Kyrie wide open on the wing for three. Kyrie is a menace in space, so when teams try to blitz Luka in the pick and roll with Kyrie as the screener, you get Kyrie plenty of space to work with to create a good look for himself. One of the most promising factors is that we've seen the inverse of this, where it's not just Luka finding Kyrie when he's open for easy looks, but Kyrie has been creating easy looks for Luka as well. The Mavericks are going to set up to run a stack pick and roll, which involves your usual ball screen, but Luka is going to set up at the nail so that he can screen on Chet when Gafford rolls to the basket. The problem it creates now is Jalen Williams is behind Kyrie on the play, so Chet has to make sure Gafford is covered on a potential lob pass, and Dort needs to decide between containing Kyrie's drive or following Luka, so Luka just pops out to the perimeter to get the pass for the catch and shoot three. The Mavericks set up here to run multiple dribble handoffs early in half-court offense, all so that they can set up Kyrie with the ball up top, as well as two off-ball screening sets with space down low along the baseline. One off-ball set is going to be this flare screen by Powell, and the other is what looks like it's going to be a pin down by Luka for Tim Hardaway Jr. But Luka is actually going to ghost the screen and slip to the basket, and Kyrie's going to find him in stride for the finish. When the Mavericks have Luka and Kyrie on the floor together, they have an offensive rating in the half court of 108.3 points per 100 possessions, which ranks in the 98th percentile of lineups in the league right now. Let's talk a little bit about the Mavericks half-court offense because this is a really important piece of the puzzle when talking about how they'll potentially fare in the playoffs. We all know that the game slows down, defenses tighten up, and adjustments are made on a much more on-the-fly basis in the postseason. So the question is, are the Mavericks ready for that? And to me, based on what we've seen, 
it's hard to imagine that they're not. They have some pretty impressive offensive sets that they've been running that take an already really difficult team to guard to the next level. This play is gonna start with Exum making what's called an Iverson cut where he'll go from one side of the court to the other across the top of the key, receiving two screens on the way there. Luka is gonna feed it to Kleba, and notice that Kyrie is gonna be looping around from one side of the floor to the opposite wing. It looks like Kleba will either pass to Kyrie or they'll get into a dribble handoff, but with the Heat looking as though they're already anticipating this, Kyrie instead makes a backdoor cut for Kleba to find him on his way to the basket, and it puts the Heat into rotation defensively, ultimately leading to multiple closeout attacks to generate an open three. We saw them run this same exact play against the Warriors out of a sideline out of bounds, and instead of just getting the defense into rotation, it actually just got Kyrie an easy look at the rim. Here, they're gonna run a horns chin action where they set up in a horns formation, and Hardaway Jr. is gonna get it to Gafford and make a cut to the basket using Kyrie's chin screen at the elbow. This is gonna get Jimmy's attention, so Luca makes use of that lapse in attention to cut up off of Kyrie's pin down so that he can get the pass from Gafford where they can then get into the pick and roll. And with Jimmy tagging Gafford on the roll, it's gonna leave Kyrie wide open on the wing for the pass and they get an easy three out of it. What's cool about this play is that they don't even necessarily need to run the pin down after the initial back screen because we saw against the Jazz that it can just as easily create an open shot at the rim if the defense isn't ready to provide help. Even aside from these high quality half court sets, they have the threat of Luka being able to generate offense at any given time simply by driving the basketball and forcing increased defensive attention. And there's no doubt that he's gonna be able to turn that attention into a good look for one of his teammates. The same goes for Kyrie. The Heat started to just accept the fact that they were gonna have to double him to get the ball out of his hands in their matchup, but the Mavericks had no issue capitalizing on those open looks that arise as a result. But offense isn't really this team's problem, is it? When people talk about this Mavericks team and the potential concerns for them in a postseason setting, it's usually defensive concerns that are brought up. We know that their defense has been much better lately, especially since acquiring Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington. But is it good enough? Right now, their defense has been strong enough that they've got the personnel to hold water and allow their offense to do a lot of the heavy lifting without hemorrhaging points on the defensive end. Gafford and PJ have added a lot of versatility to their defensive infrastructure, with PJ being able to guard the perimeter and do a little bit of switching, and Gafford has been a really solid weak side shot blocker and just overall rim deterrent and rebounder. One of the biggest wild cards is going to be Derek Lively. He's been out since the 31st of March with a knee sprain, and the Mavericks plan on holding him out for the rest of the regular season in order to give him extra time to rest. If he's not back, that means their depth is going to be pretty hindered, and Gafford and Lively both being healthy really allowed the Mavericks to get basically 48 straight minutes of players that do essentially the same things at a very high level. I think Lively is a bit better of a defender, so having him and Gafford able to play freely is going to be huge for Dallas. But really, the Mavericks have one of the most important things working in their favor, and that's Luka Doncic. Even outside of everything I've talked about in this video, we know that Luka being Luka is good enough to get your foot in the door in a series. The difference between past Dallas teams that we've seen give teams fits in the playoffs is that this team now has Kyrie Irving alongside Luka, and the supporting cast around these two is by far the best it's ever been. Look at any team in the West right now, and I can almost guarantee that just about all of them don't want to deal with Dallas. They went from a team that was in the outside tier of contender to now looking like they belong in that high-end contender tier with some of the best teams in the league. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. That's the easiest way to support me and help me continue making content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.